Hi friends, it's Belinda here from Bee Making Joy and welcome to my channel. This is episode 29 of What Brings Me Joy, a mostly knitting podcast from my home here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And I've started my recording on today is uh, Monday, February 26th. Uh, this should be ready for your viewing on Wednesday, so happy Whip Wednesday. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, I'm so glad to have you back. Uh, in this episode, I have one finished object. My whip count is now at nine, temporarily, and maybe 10 if we count the quilt. Um, yeah, if you're interested in any one particular project, you can jump ahead with the chapter titles across the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to just jump right into work, finished objects because um, I'm loving it. I've been wearing it all week. This is the Melody sweater pattern by Claudia Pattern by Claudia Quintanilla of Unit Toronto. There you can see the design. There we go. Get the lighting on it. And that same design is replicated in the hem and a little bit on the sleeve. And I used Lion Brand Touch of Merino, which is a DK weight, 90% acrylic, 10% merino. It's a bottom up construction. And I'll tell you, I worried all the way through this yoke, wondering if it was going to fit, thinking that opening was too big, too big, too big, and then suddenly it decreased up just right. I thought the neck was going to be too big, but it's so comfy. I'm loving it. People tell me that bottom-up sweaters tend to fit better. I don't know, but this one is perfect. So the Melody Sweater by Claudia Quintanilla of Unit Toronto. I'm wearing it with jeans right now. I don't know if I can get back far enough to show you. There we go. It also looks pretty good with a skirt, which I wore on Sunday. I've added two inches more than what the pattern calls for, because belly, you know. And I don't know if you can tell, if, you can, if I can show you, I've um, put a purple thread in the back section so I can tell which is the back which is the front, because there are short rows. Short rows are just under the design in the back. And if one looks closely, you can probably see my short rows because I did not do a very neat job of the wrap and turns, of resolving the wrap and turns on that final round around. Yeah, I think I need to revisit Japanese short rows or German short rows next time I do short rows. Anyway. Now, my, I have a few whips that I will talk about, not all of them, of course. My stadium sit upon, that design is still with the technical editor. That's these three cushions across the bed. Now we're on track for releasing this pattern in about three weeks. They are cushion covers with also the option of a carry handle for tote bags. Um, my first, my, First project is the finishing touches on the oh, baseball version that I'm still working on. I should have this done in time for the pattern release, I think. And so I had a couple of waiting opportunities in the past week to work on it. So it's coming along. It goes around the, whoops sides of the pillow cushion and I'm going to extend this one too with uh, handles. Ah. So I worked on it some when I took my daughter to the doctor. I worked on it some when I went to the mall with her and got tired of following her around so I sat down and worked on it. My my foot has pretty much healed, but it's still not very strong. So about 20 minutes of walking was all I could handle. I should probably get back on the treadmill or the uh, stationary bike or something. And I probably said that last episode and I haven't done it yet. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I also worked on it some on Sunday morning when I forgot how clocks work. <laughs> I showed up to the Kingdom Hall book way too early. I woke up at 8.30 and somehow I got it into my head that I needed to leave the house by 8.45 in order to get there by 10. But it's only an eight minute walk. I just skipped nine. <laughs> so 
So I guess maybe I was overexcited about wearing my new sweater. Hi friends, it's editing Belinda from the future here. Um, I said walk when I meant drive and I'm noticing a few um, verbal mistakes in my re editing. Um, I've co made corrections on the screen, but I wanted to hop on and apologize to anyone who is watching in another language with uh, translations on. It's probably confusing. I'm so sorry. Uh, I did notice also last episode, for some reason, I said Walmart sneakers instead of Walmart needles. I don't know what's happening with my brain. Anyway, I apologize. So I've knit a bit in the parking lot. Now this is going to go back into my purse and we'll putter along on it. And like I said, it should be ready before our pattern release in three weeks. So there we go. First project. And what shall we talk about next? The snowflake throw. My got it in the project bag from Pearl Passion from their mystery yarn kit last December. And I'm using um, December's kit from Ginger Snap That called the Enchanted Winter Forest. My intention is to put in one color each month. So we started off slow because I'm designing it as we go. So I had to work out the designs and the stitch counts and how many rows I'm going to get out of each color. So now that's all figured out, it's smooth sailing. Um, yeah, the yarn from Ginger's not that. Oh, here's the rest of the kit. So there's my next color, it gets slightly more bluer. It's getting to the point where it's bunched up on my needle. I wonder if I have a longer cord. So I designed that, am I showing you the right side? Yeah. I designed that center snowflake myself. The next section is snow angels. That's a stitch pattern from the Vogue Knitting Stitch Dictionary. I can't really tell whether you can see it. And then the next section is Snow, snowmen and I've got it worked out yeah we're halfway through his middle body ready to change of colors yeah that's coming along um, like I said these are Yarns from Ginger Snap That, they're fingering weight on their Lush Fingering Base, which is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. The skeins were coming in at slightly more than 50 grams, but I worked out the math to make sure that I came in under 50 grams so that when I write the pattern, I'm writing it as I go. Um, when I release the pattern, others won't have a problem of running out. So they're designed for 50 gram skeins. Uh, I stopped the first color early just for aesthetics. So we've got about 15 grams left to maybe do up the bind off with maybe. Then the next color I used 48.9 grams. And going forth, the math works out that we should be using 48.9 grams of each color. Because as the circle grows and the number of stitches double, the number of rows we can get from each color will have. And it should still work out to 48.9 grams of each color. So, yeah. Stay tuned next month. Well, no, next month will be the rest of the snowmen. And then in April, we should be getting into the next color Will I have to come up with another stitch, stitch pattern. I've marked off several options in the Vogue Knitting Stitch Dictionary. I might grab another stitch dictionary to have a look at. I might go to the library or the bookstore and just have a look through. Okay. I think that's all that there is to tell you about that. Um, let me get these out of the way and then we'll show you the Pokemon cloak. 
<clears throat> so this is the Pokemon cloaks that I'm designing for my daughter out of Pokemon themed um, Ninny's Gains from Fangirl Fibers. I know I'm going to get really hot as I put this on. So we, there we go. The neck opening, we've got an armhole opening, and you're not getting the full effect because it's still bunched up on the needles on the bottom there. I did three and a half more colors since last episode, and I've only got one and a half colors left to go before I can start the bottom hem and the button band. I've got those yarns already ordered. They should be ready. They might even be ready before we finish recording uh, from Ancient Arts. So these yarns were from Fangirl Fibers, but they don't do solid colors for regular purchase. They do just mystery packages, theme packages, sci-fi themes, Disney themes, Pokemon themes, etc. So I ordered the complimentary yarns from Ancient Arts in Calgary. Uh, red, white, and black for the Pokeball colors. Uh, we're getting so excited, my daughter and I, to get started on the next part. I still have to graph out or write out the hood part, part of the pattern. <clears throat> Pardon me for my speed and my choppiness of my speaking. I am so hoarse, out of breath. <laughs> I haven't been breathing very well recently. Okay, I'm going to pause because I'm getting very hot. I think I might uh, change or at the very least step outside for a bit. So last episode, I had cast on a new project. And since then, I frogged it and cast it on again twice. This is the Equilibrium Shawl by Monique Boonstrom. And here's the front side. I'm on row 23 now. I've got a lifeline in there. I used just uh, sewing thread for my lifeline, but I might regret that because I can't actually see it in the fabric if I ever need to use it again. Um, yeah, I was dropping stitches, so I restarted twice. And then I decided to switch to bamboo needles rather than my Shiagu so that they would stop slipping around so much. And now I realize that these are four millimeters instead of the 3.5 millimeters that I started with. So I can, when I look closely, I can tell right here is where I switched needles. So I might have to block a little aggressively on that little section. We'll see how it all works out on the end. Um, so this is the Equilibrium Shawl by Monique Boonstrom of A Passion for Lace, except I have digressed tremendously from the yarn and the needles recommended in the pattern. It's Shetland lace, designed for use with uh, gossamer wool, gossamer thin cobweb wool, and two millimeter needles, I think. Something that small, size zero needles. I don't remember, but I, don't need another shawl, didn't want to spend more money on a shawl, I've got lots of shawls. That's only a small, minuscule collection of the shawls that I have. But um, some people from our Monday makeup, our Monday Makers Meetup group on Zoom, were doing this, talking about doing this shawl. And um, Irina Shire from the Fiber Chats YouTube channel, has started a mystery, or not a mystery, has started to knit along for this shawl. So I wanted to join in. I have enjoyed working on the same thing that other people are joining in on. But I didn't want to use Gossamer Thin Yarn, so I went off script. I found this at Walmart. Aunt Lydia's my favorite color, purple. Officially, this is called Wood Violet, the color. So Aunt Lydia's Crochet Cotton. So of course, a thicker yarn than required and cotton is not as drapey. So I've had to go up needle sizes quite a lot 
in order to get enough drape. Um, and with changing the yarn and the needle and the gauge of a pattern, you're changing how big the pattern's going to get and how much yarn you're going to use. So I have no idea how much yarn this is going to use. Um, yeah. Oh, I wanted to tell you, Irina from Fiber Chats YouTube channel, I'll link below. Uh, she hosted a Zoom group to discuss the startup of this knit along. And she posted that recording onto her YouTube channel. And check it out if you're interested in Shetland Lace because it gives a lot of good tips. Um, I think I think you'll like that. Um, yeah, where was I? I've gone totally off script using cro cro crochet cotton. Uh, Shetland Lace is yarn overs on every row, even on the wrong side row. So you're making new yarn overs before you've resolved the last yarn over, which I was struggling with. And maybe not so much with this needle, but with the slippery needle, my stitches were rolling around. So when I come back to that yarn over, I'd have to look at which way the string actually is supposed to go and make sure I'm knitting into the right side of that yarn over. So it's slow going. Um, following along on the chart one row at a time. I've uh, inputted the chart into a uh, knitting chart app. Um, I know a lot of people use Knit Companion, which I might try sometime, but I'm currently using a chart called Knitting Chart, an, an app called Knitting Chart. The daughter's bouncing again. <laughs> anyway, I was saying I, it's going to be super large so I'll do some math when I get into the center section and decide if I want to cut out some rows to adjust the size. Or maybe I'll end up with a tablecloth or a curtain. Who knows? We'll plug away at that. Um, I'm going to grab some more of this thread at our next grocery trip up to Walmart if they have any left, just to, to make sure because it's my favorite color, so I can never have too much of my favorite color, right? <laughs> yeah, that's... That was a total sidetrack uh, impulse cast on, matching impulse to join this knit along peer pressure, right? <laughs> but it's going to be pretty if I manage to get it done. Uh, even if I only get half of it done, it's a doily it's a tablecloth it's something okay i'm going to talk about february finish it february uh the concept where you look at all your old projects and decide what you're going to do with them whether you're going to continue them or whether you're going to get rid of them frog them whatnot this year since all my whips are under control well they're documented I'll say that. Um, I decided to focus on my sewing projects this February. And uh, I haven't talked to my daughter yet about the remaining items in my mending pile that belong to her. But I made a lot of progress on the t-shirt quilt that I'm making for my husband. So I'll take you down to the basement to show you, but you'll have to excuse the mess down there. <laughs> So this is Dan's t-shirt quilt. All his uh, shirts from the various races he's done. Not all his shirts, he has kept his favorite. Uh, a few years ago, he gave me some to make a quilt with and I had uh, prepped them with a um, stabilizer on the back. Here's what I used if you're interested. ECT stabilizer, heat and bond. And then um, just last week, I had him lay them out in kind of how he wanted them to uh, arrange. And then he brought me down more t-shirts to cut, to add to the pile. So uh, I did some of that last week. I've run out, I'm down to just scraps left. So some of them are not yet heat and bond. I've got more of that stuff on order from 
Amazon. I'm not sure where it's shipping from because it's not due to get here until March the 2nd. But that's fine. In the meanwhile, I've got lots I can do. Um, so, one thing I wish before I started the quilt, I wish I'd been more prepared and actually planned out how big I wanted each piece to be. Because now it's going to be difficult lining them up. I did prepare sections of a um, stripe to arrange in between them. But uh, I'm not a quilter. I started it with no plan. I have done two quilts previously, one for each of my two oldest daughters, and each quilt I took 10 years to make. Never did it properly with a quilting batting or a proper bottom. Um, I'd use flannel for the midsection and a flat bed sheet for the bottom and assembled my top and sandwiched those together to make a quilt. My husband doesn't want the bed sheet on the bottom. He wants just the flannel to cuddle up in. So I need to play around and make the top sheet. So my plan going forward is to start with this strip. I'll um, trim them so we, these ones are all the same height and assemble them with a bit of stripe in between. And then however long that strip winds up being will be how wide I make the top sheet of the quilt. And then the remainder, I'll make a border to make it match to this edge. And then, um, not going to do any of the fancy swirling quilting patterns that people do. Um, they're gorgeous, but I've never done them yet. Instead, I, um, I'm going to attach the top sheet to the batting blanket by stitching along the ditch of all the straight lines I can find, or most of them. So, yeah, that's the plan and I'm sticking to it, slowly but surely. I am glad he got me to come back to working on this quilt. It is fun. But, uh, yeah. um, he did decide to go with just the logos, the names, rather than all of the logos of the sponsors. We just cut out the logo of the name of the race. This would be this one. Except for this one, where, is it? Yeah, where he himself was a sponsor. Uh, Tower Chrysler, the car dealership that he used to own with his family. Everything else is just the logo of the race. Except this one in the middle was a t-shirt that um, he wore as a kid and then his mother gave it to our oldest and all three of our girls had worn it and so he decided he wanted that added to the quilt too because it was special for him so we'll try and keep that in the middle um, the other pieces might get rearranged a little bit as I make sure and trim and try to fit yeah well, that's going to be fun. That's all my crafty adventures for this episode, and there's no acquisitions to share. So let's do a little bit of a life update. We cleaned out our place in Canmore to put it up for sale because we haven't really been using it for the last four years, four or five years. We haven't been there much. Our friends have been using it more than we have. So we decided uh, it's time to let it go. And so we cleaned some stuff out of it so we can get ready to put it up for sale. We have tenants in the upper portion of the house. So I do feel bad that we're inconveniencing them by putting it up for sale, but we never set out to be tenants, to be landlords. So anyway, we brought home these chairs uh, that I wanted to keep. I love them. Um, two armchairs and a footstool to put in the TV room. So I needed to rearrange the furniture to fit them in. So then I decided since I'm rearranging furniture, I should shampoo the carpets. 
So I first I shampooed all the main area, the high traffic area, the first day. Then the next day I moved the furniture out from the walls at, and shampooed all of that area that, that was under the furniture. And then the third day rearranged everything, brought in the chairs. They lived in my van for a good five or six days while, while I was doing all this. Um, so now we've got it all rearranged. Uh, I'll insert a picture because I really like my little knitting corner that I created. Um, and now the carpet cleaner is sitting in the kitchen in the way because I intended to go back and shampoo the middle of the room again before I put the carpet cleaner away. So I really should because they, they were so dirty. I bought this Bissell carpet cleaner in 2020 and I've shampooed all the carpets at least twice since that. But they're still so dirty. Carpets are so unhygienic. I hate them. <laughs> But hate them and love them. I don't know if I want every floor to be hardwood cold floors. The hardwood's kind of warm, but anyway. Yeah, so I need to go back and finish carpooing, shampooing, carpet cleaning that. The main traffic areas again. The other rooms, maybe next month I'll do them all again. Um... Yeah, that's what our family's been up to. Um, no, no travels, no races, no, nothing else exciting. Um, a lot of podcasters talk about what they're reading and what they're watching on TV. Um, what I watch is a lot of knitting podcasts and then um, some crime shows. Um, mindless stuff, really. And I'm not much of a reader, but I have been the last three years following along with the Unraveling podcast in their book club. And this year they're doing The Golden Thread, How Fabric Changed History by Cassia St. Clair. Now, the Unraveling podcast is a knitting podcast, audio only. It's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Some other stuff. Um, I'll link to their website and then from there you can get to their podcast. Uh, it's hosted by Knitting Daddy Greg and Pam Maher and they talk about their knitting projects and the things that they've learned and then every second episode is a book club episode. I don't know how long they've been doing it but I've follow, been following along the last three years. We have did they're always fabric, fiber, fiber related books. We've done two previously. I'm drawing a blank on what they were. And this year's the golden thread. And I'm only slightly behind where they are right now on their podcast. And I'm enjoying it. It's a really interesting book. So um, I'll just go through the um, table of contents for you. Because that's a good summary. It's really interesting. It's such tiny print. So chapter one is Fibers in the Cave, the Origins of Weaving. Then we have Dead Man's Shrouds, Wrapping and Unwrapping Egyptian Mummies. And three is Gifts and Horses, Silk in Ancient China. Four is Cities that Silk Built, the Silk Roads. Five is Surf Dragons, the Vikings' wood, Woolen Sails. Six is the King's Ransom, Wool in Medieval England. Seven is Diamonds in the Rough, Lace and Luxury. Eight is Solomon's Coats, Cotton America and Trade. Then we have Layering in Extremis, Clothing to Conquer Everest and the South Pole. Workers in the Factory, Rayon's Dark Past. Under Pressure, Suits, suits Suitable for Space. Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger, Record-Breaking Sports Fabrics. And chapter 11 is the Golden Cape, Harnessing Spider Silk. Spider Silk. Ooh. And then there's an introduction and a um, appendix. And what do you call that ending? A coda. 
I get it's uh, such tiny print. I've had to get out my magnifying sheet to read it. <laughs> Actually, my magnifying sheet has an on and off switch. There's lights in it. I should replace these batteries. Yeah, so I want to try and get into the habit of reading more before bed instead of spending all my time on online browsing. Yeah. Well, that's all I have to share with you this week. Um, so my next episode will be March for 13th. And in the meantime, if you could press the like button so more people could see my video, that would be really nice. If you want to be notified when the next uh, episode comes out, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell. And uh, happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy reading, happy whatever it is that you like to do. Go find some joy. <laughs>